Welcome to The Cynical Developer, the podcast that helps you to improve your development knowledge and career through explaining the latest and greatest in development technology and providing you with what you need to succeed as a developer. In this episode, we talk with Lawrence Sowell about Kadira and Exist Social. As a serial entrepreneur, Lawrence has built businesses in the entertainment, real estate, sports, manufacturing and technology industries. For the last decade, he has been working on solving problems through technology. Lawrence has spent the last couple of years traveling the world speaking about technology and how it is used to solve real world problems. So welcome to the Cynical Developer, Lawrence. Hey, James. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time to uh, to come on and talk to us. Absolutely. Look forward to it. Okay, so we'll start off with that. What is or who is Codera? So basically, Codera is a creative agency, uh, kind of a user experience house. We build apps, so on and so forth. Uh, but we're really big on thoughtful digital experiences and finding ways to use the latest technologies to solve real-world problems. Okay. So... Uh, what sort of services as an agency do you uh, do you provide? So we do UI UX design, app development, product strategy, brand development, websites and web development of course, social commerce and custom social networks. Okay. So your app development is that uh, mobile apps or is it web apps or windows apps or, or what sort of stuff? Native apps. Okay. Cool. Native mobile apps. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. I've worked uh, a little bit for uh, a few creative agencies uh, over the years. It's uh, it's a challenging uh, sector to be in. Oh, yes, very challenging, especially, you know, in the past, I've had some acquisitions and mergers with other companies, and we just started this company just a little over a year ago. And so with really with very little portfolio, it, it, it was a challenge to get started, but um, it just took us a few projects to start showing off what we had um, to where we started getting some some good customers, and then we've of course developed our own products as well. Yeah, sure. And that's one of the other things that we're here to talk about today is Exist Social at B two B. So that's one of your your new products. Uh, what exactly is it? So Exist Social is like a a B two B product, basically business to business. Um, it's a social network. If you can think about like Facebook or Instagram. Um, it's a social network like that, but the point of it is, is there's so many businesses or, or groups or communities that want to have their own social network. Um, you know, they don't want to use Facebook or or the other social platforms for multiple different reasons. And to build one from the ground up is just really expensive. And you know, the ones that are offered out there today, uh, the other white labels, if you would, you know, their their user experience isn't say as good as Instagram or Facebook so they don't they don't get a lot of traction so really it's we've built a a mobile first native first uh, social network that uh, has the back end, the front end all the framework everything's done and a company or business or community uh, organization can come to us and say hey um, you know we want a social network that does ABC and um, we have most of the features um, that most everybody wants every now and then there might be one or two features that we don't have, and then we'll just custom quote them on that. But basically, instead of having to spend in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to to develop, uh, you know, a scalable, high end, high user experience social network, um, somebody can already get that prepackaged with us for a much lower cost, and then we can build other custom features and experiences around their product, and of course, brand the social network to their brand. Um, you know, launch it in the app store as their own apps, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the uh, the white label um, social network um, platforms that are out there. The um, the the the, the WYSIWYG build your own uh, social network sites, and they are terrible. I've had a few um, acquaintances uh, try to use them and and build the next Facebook or MySpace on them, and and they've been awful. Um, yeah. So so they're not a great experience for uh, for the user, but. When there's stuff like Facebook, which has the business side to it, why mm-hmm. why would I want to use Exist Social rather than the likes of Facebook, which are free? Yeah, so there's there's lots of reasons. Um, you know, basically the disadvantages are control of your data. Facebook owns all the data, not you. So with Exist Social, you're the owner of your data. Um, of course. 
customization. You know, Facebook owns a platform and I doubt you're going to be able to get them on the phone or talk to somebody to get them to do a custom feature or custom experience for you. And then, of course, monetization. If you think about it, you know, they're monetizing their platform. So if you set up a group there or a page there, you know, nowadays you, you have to spend money just to get out to the people on your page that like your page. I mean, I've built Facebook pages up into the thousands, tens of thousands. And then all of a sudden now like 6% or 5% of the users see a post. And so, you know, basically I have to pay to try to re-engage with my audience. So ultimately um, what you're doing is you're building value for, you know, another company. Whereas if you need to monetize, own your data, have control, customize, then something like Exist Social is what you need. Right. Okay. Okay. So... It's a B2B system, but is it primarily for that paying business or is it something I could look at setting up for my local society or my club or something like that? Or is it, is it not that sort of product? So it's, it's, it can be both. I mean, um, you know, we, we have a lot of leads coming in every day and I've kind of went through and found that, that about half of them are businesses um, that are looking in the other half of them are just, you know, might be a group of, of friends or a community or, you know, somebody wanting to just do something for a private group of 200 people. So really there's, you know, it can be used for, for anybody that wants to create their own social network. Sure. So you talked about monetization there. Um, and I know with the likes of Facebook, it is quite irritating where they plaster, um, adverts all over the page. They, they inject adverts into your your videos and stuff like that, and and they're they're getting stuff they're getting money out of that. What mm-hmm. sort of uh, options do you have within the system to to monetize the, uh, the the platform? So what our goal is is to do more of a revenue share uh, with our users or with uh, the people that that build social networks. So we've developed uh, relationships with in feed advertisers. And generally the way it would work is let's say that you uh, fired up a social network with us, launched it, and you wanted to monetize it, then you know we would monetize it for you with ads in the feed, but we would share the revenue with you um, partially to offset any monthly costs for servers, hosting, et cetera, et cetera, but also to create a you know revenue stream or an income profit uh, for you as a business. So we look at it, look at it as kind of a partnership. Um, on each in, uh, individual project. Right, okay. Um, so you've got customization as well there. Is that something that developers can um, get involved with at their current business? Is it something they have to do through you guys? Do you have APIs and things like that? So right now, you know, we're, we're literally at the beginning of Exist Social. Um, so right now, you know, all the custom features, everything, you know, we have to develop, um, or, or we might be willing to work with some developers, um, to, you know, do some of the, some of the work, but right now we don't have APIs or SDKs or anything like that. Um, that is part of our future plan, but right now, um, it's all in-house. Right. Okay. So I had a quick look through the uh, through the website about setting uh, up uh, an account or a system with uh, with Exist Social, mm-hmm. and um, it gives you two options when you first start: desktop and mobile, uh, or mm-hmm. iOS and Android apps. What is it that you're that that we're getting here? Is it two separate things? Well, no. I mean, you can have all of it if you want, or you can just have one or the other. Uh, we actually are basically six platforms. Um, we're, you know, iPhones and Android phones, so iOS and Android, but then also, um, iPad apps and also an, uh, Android tablet app and then also uh, website and mobile responsive. So, uh, when you select the apps, of course, you're getting all the apps, both iPad, you know, or tablet, iPad and, uh, mobile phones. Um, and then if you select web, you get that as well. Uh, so basically that's, uh, just for us to know, you know, what the focus is of the business or community that's looking for the social network. Um, but in many cases, we've seen the people that are signing up select both options, that they want both web and mobile apps. Right, okay. Yeah, it's, um, 
it it's not a a platform that uh, I've really considered. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, for any of my businesses or, or anything like that. But I was speaking to uh, a friend of mine who owns a um, a tropical fish business and he's actually in the process through a, through an agency, probably similar to yourselves, to build an app for his business. So rather than uh, having a website, he's got an application. So I guess it's the, the same sort of ethos as that because you can go into his app and you can... Uh, buy your products and it has um, like uh, a point system, a loyalty system, that sort of thing in there so that uh, he gets a, the repeat business. And I guess that's the similar model to, to what exists socials going for is that you're trying to get the your, your client, clients involved in that in that ecosystem. Yes, exactly. And in our and just to speak on what you said in the tropical fish business, a little off topic, at Codero we're also an incubator of sorts, and we're actually partnered with a fish company um, that we have built an app for. So it'd be interesting to see um, what, if any, synergies are aligned there. Oh right, okay. And uh, is that a an importer exporter or uh, an actual uh, retailer? Um, actually. Um, well, I'm not sure if you want this recorded or not, but um, basically what it is is it's it's fish compatibility uh, because one of the biggest problems when people buy fish is they don't know what fish are compatible with other fish. Mm -hmm. um, so what we've done is designed an experience um, and built a prototype around, you know, if somebody selects a fish that they want, it automatically shows them what other fish are compatible uh, from the database with that fish. And it, it pretty much like builds their tank from start to finish. Right, okay. um, so it'd be more on the retail side. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm very heavily into uh, my fish keeping. As uh, some of our listeners will know, I'm involved in the British Cichlid Association I'm on the committee for that, and uh, I've actually owned my own tropical fish business. And uh, compatibility um, charts and things are very, very hard. There's a lot of information and a lot of variables there. So that's mm -hmm. something I would definitely be interested in uh, in seeing when it's uh, when it's out there. Sounds good. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so back, back to what we're actually uh, here to talk about, and um, which is Exist Social. Uh, what, are the, what are the benefits really for Exist Social over the likes of Facebook um, for, for a business? I, I know we've talked about monetization and customization. Is it, is it just those? Well, no, I mean, you know, like we we said before, you know, customization, um, control, monetization are all great. Also having a niche community that can help to determine the future of their social environment instead of having a one-size-fits-all approach. So, um, but really one of the main things I've noticed, what people have said, because, you know, it's, it's all about voice of customer. You know, people are telling us why they're coming to us over Facebook, because obviously one of the first questions we ask is, well, why don't you use a Facebook group or a Facebook page? And um, they said it's just the noise. Everybody's on Facebook and everybody does everything on Facebook and everybody gets so many notifications every day that they don't really pay attention to them. Sure. So it's very easy for things to get lost in the noise. And so, you know, different uh, customers that have came to us said, you know, we'll have a group and, and we'll send something out or comment on something and, and somebody will say, oh, I didn't see that. And it's because, you know, they, ha they got 20 other notifications in the next two hours while they're at work and they just didn't scroll down their notifications far enough to see it. So I'd say one of the other major benefits is this is a focused community around what, you know, solution the business or, or you know, person or what have you needs. Um, therefore, it's the notifications aren't going to get lost lost in the noise yeah sure and you're not going to become uh, a victim of facebook's uh, updates to the algorithms now, i admin probably one of the uk's largest uh, tropical fish facebook groups we've got something like 32 33000 um registered uk members and that's 28000 of them have been active in the last 90 days and we still get people missing things because of uh, the way that Facebook is always just show you the latest. They can't see what happened, say, an hour or two hours ago unless people are commenting on it. And then one of the weirdest things that's happened is that over the last week there's been an update and all of a sudden our 
requests from UK um, registered people has dropped mm-hmm. right back to maybe sort of 10 or 20 a day. But coming in from the likes of the States, uh, India and, uh, and the other Asian com- countries, we've been absolutely inundated um, with requests for people uh, to join from there. And we're a UK um, group and designed for uh, UK residents. And it's not something we've had real an issue with, but then all of a sudden it's like uh, Facebook have said, oh, well, no, you've got too many UK people. You need other people in there and they're opening the gates to them and we're falling victim to those. And I guess if we controlled the, the social network around that, to to some extent, like with Exist Social, we wouldn't fall foul of that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Sure. So now that uh, you've got Exist Social, and we all know that the the social space is is moving at quite uh, quite a speed. What do you see as coming in the near future for uh, for social media? Uh, well, really, I mean, I think in the near future you're going to see you know stories has became a big deal it's been duplicated everywhere um you know ar and i think real-time virtual social experiences is what we're going to see happen in just the next 12 months um you know part of our focus is is to stay up with that trend Um, stories is one of the features that we're also going to develop that you know people may want to use for different social networks so i'd say you know augmented reality and just virtual experiences uh, in the real world, like bringing the digital and real world together is really what we're going to probably see in the near future. Yeah. So what, what is it exactly you mean by the real-time virtual social experience? Is it like um, a party with, uh, with with a webcam on uh, in the browser or something like that? Well, like if you, if you can imagine looking in your phone um, and – you know, you, you see kind of like you see with stories, that's kind of broad augmented reality and, and a smaller scale. Um, but being able to, um, you know, see items in your phone that aren't in the real world, although you see the real world through your phone, kind of like stories looks like when you take those like Snapchat pictures and such. But then also, you know, the introduction of different hardware like glasses. I know Google Glass didn't uh, succeed really well, but I know Facebook's working on a pair of glasses and so I think that, you know, whether it's virtual or augmented, that, you know, that's the direction it's going. You know, the gaming community is really big. Uh, the, the game boomers, they call them, are, are bigger than the baby boomers by far. Yeah. And they're, they're all used to, you know, virtual reality now. And those, those types of real, feel, real feeling experiences, you know, that feel like real life, whether they're virtual or augmented. So I think... What we're going to see in the next, you know, year is, you know, some of that hardware start to get out to the masses to where, you know, virtual and augmented realities kind of where the, the new social setting um, starts to take place. Like if you could imagine um, sitting at a table and your the table's empty, but you're looking through the pair of glasses and you can make a chessboard appear there. And then somebody comes in through virtual reality from somewhere else and you see them sitting across from you, although they're not there, you see everything else in your house like it would be normal, except you've brought elements into your house like a person and a, and a chessboard and, and you're in an augmented reality because you see some things that are actually real in your room and you brought some things into that reality, which makes it augmented. Yep. And then... Uh, for the other person that came over, they're in a virtual reality, right? Because nothing they see is in their actual physical environment. They've poured it over into a, a virtual environment, if you would. So it's more virtual reality. So I see that um, starting to come out um, and, and be used in the next year or so. Right. Yeah, it'd be, uh, be quite interesting to, uh, to do and, uh, and, and, and to see that, uh, that coming out. Um, so you... you from from a social network point of view, I guess you could you could hold your meetings with your with your group of uh, of clients, and they they can all sit in their office, and uh, and you can actually interact with with them and 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 see them in your office, even though they're not really there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's where it's going. Cool. So, what does the future look like for Exist Social? Where where do you see this uh, this going? So, you know, a little bit like you mentioned earlier, the ability for developers to get in and, and build on top of what we have. Um, also, the ability for anyone to create a, a social platform for free. Um, kind of, you know, think of it like Slack, you know. 
Um, so yeah, just the ability for, for people to be able to create a social network for free, uh, more of a plug and play, uh, developer friendly, um, and just kind of let it, it, it become what it becomes. Because to me, um, with technology, it's not so much about, you know, what Facebook's model is, is, you know, they've developed the social network, they have all the control and, you know, people use it and people are really the product at the end of the day. Um, and with something like exist social, it's, it's, it's more freedom, right? So, so to us, the future is letting anybody create any social network. You know, there could be 10,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand social networks and, and the ones that are, are, are worthy or the ones that have the right culture or, or meaning will, will grow on their own. So it, it, it kind of expands the idea of allowing anybody to create a social network without having money at more so they just have good ideas and and we have the framework and platform to let them go do that on yeah it, it sounds it sounds quite good and 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 coming from um, a background where i used to do a lot of freelancing i was often asked to build this sort of platform um a couple of times uh, i was uh, i've been asked to uh, if i can build ebay or if i can build facebook and um the, the answer is always yes but you can't afford for me to build it for you um so so i, I could see uh, something like this being being pretty good for uh, for that sort of uh that sort of customer and uh i think being able to get in there and, and develop against it as well i think is uh, is good because the likes of facebook do have that developer integration where you can build apps and stuff like that but it's not to the point of the of customization that uh, that you guys are talking about exactly yep yeah cool so if um our listeners want to go and find out more about Exist Social. Um, are there any websites that they can go and look at? Have you got any videos or anything like that out there? Yeah, so basically, you know, you could follow us on Instagram at Exist underscore social um, is our Instagram, which you can click from our website, uh, B2B, the letter B, the number two, the letter B, dot exist dot social. Um, and that's actually a, a lander right now. Um, exist.social itself we plan on launching in the first part of uh, August I believe um, where we actually can, will let you know anybody just sign up on the platform to just use it if they feel like it um, so you know from there you can access our Instagram of course um, you could also go to madebycodera.com and you can go into our work section and look at a case study we did on the project exist social um, there as well um, and that's basically what we have online right now. Our plan for deployment is we plan on actually launching the Exist Social apps for, for direct-to-consumer use, just people who want to use it or try it out um, in the app stores uh, here at the beginning of, of August. Awesome. So for any listeners out there that uh, want to get in touch with, uh, with Lawrence and, and with Codera about Exist Social, I will include all those links that uh, that Lawrence mentioned. They'll all be in the in the show notes, so you can reach out to them and, and, and get a taster for uh, for really what what they're trying to do and what their platform is. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it sounds quite interesting. Sounds like there's some uh, some good uh, good things coming along with the uh, with the product. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot of fun, and you know what we have is an amazing team. And that's really what, what builds an amazing product. And from what we've played with out there in, uh, I would say, our, our competitor environment and, and what we have on the user experience side, we feel like we're far, far, far ahead of the competition right now. Awesome. Awesome. It sounds like you're, uh, you're heading in the right direction at least. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, so thanks for, for spending the time uh, today to come on and, uh, and talk to us about uh, Exist Social and about Code Era. And... Uh, I hope uh, hope it's uh, it's beneficial for you. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, James. Uh, anytime we have lots of stuff going on, so I'd love to come back again when we have something new to talk about. Yeah, definitely, definitely will do, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep uh, keep the listeners updated as to to what's going on. But uh, as as for now, thanks for listening to Cynical Developer. I'm James Sladart, and this has been Lawrence Sowell talking about Codera and Exist Social. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform and help the cynical developer to grow by increasing its audience. 
you have any questions about this or any other episode, then drop us an email, a tweet, or leave a comment on the website, where you can find all the resource links and show notes for each episode. 